Hello, my name is Dr Sunny Juckler and I'm one of the emergency medicine registrars currently working at the Leicester Royal Infirmary Emergency Department. Welcome to the first part of a series of frailty-based teaching sessions. This session is about how to perform a clinical frailty score in the ED, which can be used to plan and tailor interventions for our patients. This is the beginning of a series of teaching materials that will be made available over the next six months. Here I will be introducing you to the clinical frailty score. What is the clinical frailty score and how do you apply this to our patient population? But more importantly, how do I approach a patient who is frail? But please note, this is not the whole picture. This is a complex group of patients that are not always easy to assess in our challenging environments. In the next few slides, I'll be presenting some guiding principles that will help you when managing these patients within our clinical setting. At the Leicester Royal Infirmary, approximately two thirds of patients presenting to the emergency department are older and frail. This is our everyday bread and butter. They can present with any of the geriatric syndromes listed in the slide. You can scan the available QR code that will take you to some further teaching resources about these syndromes. So here is the clinical frailty score that can be undertaken by any appropriately trained healthcare professional. This score directly correlates with adverse outcomes, that is the higher the CFS, the higher the associated morbidity and mortality. A few things to remember. Don't let the pictures misguide you, please refer to the descriptors. So to help you with this, please follow the QR code on the right hand side to download the Clinical Frailty app to your phone. Secondly, do not use a CFS in isolation, but instead be mindful of how it provides context to the patient that you are seeing. Please ensure that you ask the patient or next of kin or paramedics etc of what the patient's capability was two weeks ago, not right now. Be careful about differentiating between CFS 6 and 7. CFS 6 is when a patient needs help with outdoor activities and some help with basic activities. Whereas a CFS of 7 is when a patient is dependent for all forms of personal care, including hygiene and toileting. All cause mortality during admission to acute hospital is about 6% with a CFS of 6. However, if you're a CFS of 7, it can go up to 11%. So therefore, please use the app to correctly score your patients. Putting this all together in a stepwise approach. So step one, is the patient frail? If the answer is no, focus on the problem at hand just as you would with any patient. If the answer is yes, what is a CFS? Use the app to help you accurately grade this, bearing in mind this is giving you context to what your patient was like two weeks ago. What does the patient want? That is, what are their wishes or special requests? For example, some patients would want to be treated at home where possible. Third step, it's important that we aim to make shared decisions for these patients. So please involve family, next of kin and care homes where possible. Finally, what are we trying to achieve? For some patients, comfort will be the priority. Have we made a conscious decision not to do anything in the best interest of the patient? You are an important part of the patient's journey. You can make a difference. Where possible, involve your patient in the management plan. And when this is not possible, be sure to communicate with family, next of kin and care homes, etc. You are not alone and you will not be making decisions in isolation. Discuss cases with seniors and other specialties and the more you see, the more you will learn. Take the opportunity to learn from this fascinating group of patients. Every shift, I find out something new, and I'm always grateful for the amazing stories they share with me. Sometimes less is more, and that is okay, especially if it's the right thing for that patient at that point in time. Thank you for joining me for our first part of the Frailty Teaching Series. To find out more about frailty as a concept, please follow the QR code and links on the next two slides. For any further information or queries, please contact a member of the ED education team.